we have got some new parts for the Makita saw. Hey out Woodlanders, welcome back. This one's a little bit of a workshop series, possibly even entitled Daz's DIY Disasters, because this was a disaster story to do with my Makita circular saw, my 2704 table saw, and um, it just suddenly stopped working one day. So um, this is just a little episode of all the trials and tribulations of trying to get it fixed, and eventually how I, and with the help of some amazing electrician, uh, managed to get it working again. So um, I fully understand if the Makita saws is not your thing, so you can you're welcome to skip this one, ready for the next wood log. But um, if you're interested in trying to fix your own saw, or just interested in general how I managed to make a disaster out of DIYs, then uh, by all means stay along. Thanks for watching. The circular saw that you're standing on is broken at the moment. It's a Makita one. Um, using it the other day to cut some oak up and it just stopped dead as though I turned the power off. So I've had a quick check about what it is and I'm certainly no electrician but it appears I've got power from the switch to the motor so I put some new brushes in it. Very simple job really and that didn't work at all, it made no difference whatsoever. Anyway that didn't work. So that made me double check the switch. Still not that. Um, I don't think. So I've had no choice but to order a new armature and bearings, which is a whole new internal part of the motor system. They're not particularly expensive, about 60 quid, 60 pounds. Um, so I'm sort of hoping that will work. Um, it's not a particularly difficult job, but I've got to drop the motor off, which is all the, that's all bolted to a mechanism that does the twilt, tilting and up and raising and lowering. So once you get the motor off, I think it should be a fairly straightforward job. What I'm going to do now is unbolt off its stand, that's just what I'm doing there. I've took the saw blade out and what I've actually got to do is I've got to take the motor off because I've bought a new armature because I'm convinced it's the armature and if it's not the armature then it must be the switch but I have power from the switch to the motor, I can check that. So anyway, I'm gonna flip you over now, just a second. You have no idea what I'm looking for, but I've gotta get that motor off there may be a bit of progress, so the handle on here, which is the adjustment for the angle of the blade, has actually shifted the motor down so that I can take these end cap screws off. So I am going to have a look at the exploded diagram and see if I can take that end cap off whether the whole armature comes out this way, which uh, could be, could save you an awful lot of aggro. But I think I'm going to get the hoover on it next because it's a bit of a mess in there, isn't it? Right, okay, so I took this end cover off, this plastic end cover here, four screws, took the brushes out, four screws, uh, that just slides off the end, there's a little bush in there, you have to be careful of, like a, a big washer inside at the end, and that's quite loose, which must fit over the end of this bear and stop the like end float thing. And then um, there's a plastic cover, which is that, as though, like a dust cover, and then this is basically just got a, and this just kind of goes in there like that. Got my little shiny new armature, whatever you call it, armature, that's what I'm calling it. That's a new one, got nice shiny copper ends on it, look. So, I'll try it, pop it in and see what happens. That bearing's got to sit right down by the look of that. Like that, that's better. Must have been a bit of dust in there. Here he is, a bit of grease on the end of it. So we've got our plastic cover. It's back on there, like that. And then 
this. Something like that. That's sitting up nice and tight, so that's good. Which means I've done something right today. So I just smacked my head on the G clamps. I'm moving them and then you're dropping the screws out. Out of a big workshop. These YouTubers have these big fancy workshops with pristine. It's no good for me. Watch them and think, why can't I have that? Mind you, they've got like a million subscribers. So um, I don't think they're short of money or time. Which uh, I'm always short of both. Right, we're all back together. Try to clean it up as best we could. Blades back on. It's always a nervous moment when you restart something. I sort of want it to work and then think it's not going to work. And so this is the moment of truth. Oh. So something tells me it's the switch. Uh, I'm not a very happy bunny now. So I'm going to take off the switch next to see if it is that because when I bought this second hand the guy did say I put a new switch on it which starts to make me think that uh, maybe they are faulty, common fault. I can going to see that very well really. Try it like that. So we're into the switch. This is the switch. Apparently there's a soft start system which is these two wires, these two, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. These two white wires here, that's a soft start circuit. The one of those, it's just a tiny little white thing, is 30 pounds. A new brown switch, which is this bit here, they are 50 pounds. Um, so I'm looking at, I've no idea which it is. So I've got this sort of conundrum where I just keep buying parts, hoping it's something, because I'm not an electrician. So that's a new soft start circuit. You see that? And that, believe it or not, is £27. And that is a new relay, which is £50 something pounds. So I thought robbers came with guns, but clearly they come in. Uh, the form of spare parts dealers. So I think I'm going to fit the soft start relay first because something in the back of my mind thinking that that could be it because when I flick the switch we get a buzzing noise but no actual action so I'm wondering now if that's that was the culprit all along. What I'm going to have to do is either learn to solder very quickly or I'm going to have to use some crimp connectors. Hmm. I'm not very good at soldering, so <laughs> it's held and that's all that matters really. Um, but I'm going to cover it up with some heat shrink tubing so that you can't see how bad my soldering skills are. This is some heat shrink tubing I had when I used to be mess about with radio control cars, the old Tamiyas and Mardaves and Kyoshos. So if you know what I mean when I say that, you're probably in a similar vintage to me. Although saying that, as a mate of mine I went to school with, he builds race engines now called Richard. His lads, he was into, big into radio control cars and his lads have all taken it up and they do international championships now. They're really good at it. Right, that's somewhere near. So that is the soft start mechanism fitted, and which means that we're getting very close to trying out if that is going to fix the problem or not. So I will put this back together again off camera, put the cover back on for safety so the switch will work. And if that doesn't work, then I've got a new switch. 
roof again, so with the new soft start fitted. Oh. So that actually popped the fuse of the transformer, which I thought was rather unusual. So I've put another fuse in it. I'm actually going to try it again. Oh no. No, that's popped the fuse again. I apologise for that. Got a bit carried away. I picked the new switch. So I've done that. I was in the zone. Uh, flip it over, reconnect. And if this doesn't work, then the only thing then it can be is this outer case in here, and you see that on the camera. But this outer case of the motor has another, I'm not sure if that's like the, it's an outer part of the motor, I'm not sure if that has the, the, the magnet part. But anyway, there's lots of wires in there in this coil system. And so if it's not all of this, and that's the only thing that it can be, that's another 50 quid. However, I'm now 120 pounds in, and it still hasn't worked unless the switch has worked. And I'm really reluctant to keep just throwing launching money at it when hmm. we'll get this work. Give me a minute. Transformers on. Right, all for nothing. No, nope. there isn't some major fault with this. That is real pants. <laughs> um, which means now I've just got to find out and ask somebody. So I wanted to conclude this little video with exactly how we managed to get it fit. So I can't remember when I'm recording this, I've got I can't remember where, where we got to on fixing it. I think it was tripping wasn't it and blowing the fuse in the transform, that's right. So uh, a friend of ours, Derek, he's uh, an electrician, electrical engineer and he offered to have a look for me and so he did some testing and he found that the armature was fine, the new one, he found out the old armature was fine as well. He said he thought the old switch was okay, even though I'd fitted a new switch. Um, and then he did some investigation into the wiring diagram. So, do you remember me, let me have a look quickly, That's it, soldering this on. So there was a white one of these, uh, sorry, one of these, smaller, with white wires on and I cut it off because I was under the impression this was called a soft start solenoid or soft start switch. Uh, this is the soft start switch however what I was trying to replace next to the switch mechanism is called a resistor. So when I fitted this where the resistor was which is the one with the white wires then of course it took, caused it to trip and fuse and all manner of things. So anyway, Derek uh, realized that where my fault lay. So he put the one with the white wires back on. He put the new switch back on because the old switch is definitely faulty. And, and then he put the new one of these in the soft start part, which is actually inside the motor. So although I might have ordered the right part, I put it in the wrong place. So that was the reason why it was tripping fuses and knocking the fuses out. But we think, and we're pretty convinced, that the overall fault was actually the switch. So this is the old switch, and there are the contacts just there. Look. So uh, it's got a brand new switch on it, and the brand new armature, and the brand new soft start switch, and it does actually work. He did say that um, there's a smell to it, which he thinks is the new armature, new brushes bedding in, and they're just sort of getting used to their new position set but there is a definite smell to it and well, it sounds a bit different as well but it seems to work all right it switches on and off okay are you ready for a quick demo of it working yeah funny noise that it's because we've got that new motor smell anyway it's sorted so we made him a cake, or Karen did, and because uh, he didn't really want anything for it. But he's really helped me out because um, at a hundred, I was about a hundred and thirty pounds in, uh, with the risk of I'm going to spend another sixty pounds. So I thankfully had to do that. I can conclude this little mini series of Daz's DIY disasters with the circular saw, and we're back up and running now. Uh, everything I needed it for, I've actually managed to do by hand now. 
but I have some projects on the house that I need to rip some oak down. So this is definitely my preferred machine, I do like it. But thanks ever so much for watching and thanks for per persevering with us. If I know if Makita saws are not your thing, but you're just interested in workshop life and saws and electrics and repairs, then uh, appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.